Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Hello, welcome back to our lectures. And uh, if you recall what all we have seen so far in this course, uh, especially in the last class, we discussed about anelasticity. That means time dependent elastic behavior. So, we also looked at some of the examples for this uh, anelasticity uh, nature uh, in terms of thermoelastic effect and uh, uh, diffusion and uh, there is something called uh, relaxation time, right? So, uh, all these parameters uh, we will be uh, using it in the material application and its uh, deformation behavior and so on. Okay, uh, today we are going to turn our attention to another important uh, concept as the part of uh, introduction and fundamentals to this course called dislocations. Right. Very important uh, idea or uh, concepts, especially in explaining the deformation behavior of crystalline materials. Okay. Uh, in, as long as you are dealing with the crystalline materials and the deformation is only explained through dislocation mediated plasticity. Okay. And if it is non crystalline material, amorphous material, the things are different. But as far as the crystalline materials are concerned, the dislocation concepts are very important. And uh, it's better to spend some time on this uh, as a background to, before we proceed with the uh, the course that that was the intention I have prepared this uh, kind of lecture and before even going to the dislocation um, introduction and we will spend some more time on an estimate of the atomic bond strength so we have already looked at different kinds of bond and we also looked at the definition of what is bond length bond strength and different kind of bonding and etc. So, suppose if you theoretically try to estimate how much energy is required to break a bond, you know, the atom, atom to atom bond, how much it would be. So, it is a theoretical estimation of bond strength and what you are seeing in this uh, schematic diagram is well known to you now because we have enough background for this kind of what is this curve this is a force versus distance plot several times we have seen this and uh, the notations are different because the i have taken this uh, particular image from the different references so you don't have to worry about the different uh, notations but the uh, the meanings are exactly the same okay so what you are seeing here, there are two atoms, atom 1, atom 2 here and the distance between these two normally we denote as a D naught but in this particular figure it is written as B and uh, this is the, the fourth distance curve and uh, it, it can be approximated as you know, sine wave. This is that is why this extension is given, and this is uh, the direction you know the distance from from which we are going to pull this atom from its equilibrium position, and then it, when it moves from this position to towards the x direction, it goes through a maximum and then it comes to. Uh, a minimum okay so what are the points the force required to separate two atoms to a distance x plus b increases for increasing x until the maximum cohesive force is reached at which the total separation results so x plus b so this is b so this is x so 0 to x so it, as it start moving from here the force is increasing and it reaches a maximum where the cohesive force is reached. This is XM. This is the position where it is the cohesive force is maximum. After that, 
the two atoms get separated. The force displacement curve can be approximated by a half sine wave. This is a half sine wave. It's what shown here. Hence, the force per unit area to separate two planes of atoms is given by sigma is equal to sigma i sine 2 pi x by lambda. So, the distance here that is uh, half sine wave, you know, this distance is lambda by 2 and uh, the force per unit area is given by sigma is equal to sigma i sine 2 pi x by lambda where sigma i is the cohesive force and we are interested in calculation of this. So, what to do for calculation of sigma i? It is necessary to eliminate lambda. Okay. So, how do we do that? Let us look at what are the uh, simple terms available with us. For small displacements, sigma is equal to sigma i times 2 pi x by lambda. This is valid. These small displacements are still elastic. Please understand, we are still talking about elastic deformation only. The elastic strain is epsilon is equal to x by b. We are interested in moving the atom to the position of x and then the actual displacement, original displacement is b. And the st stress follows from sigma is equal to e epsilon and uh, we can replace the epsilon with x by b, then we get sigma is equal to x e by b. You suppose if we combine these two equations um, for sigma, then we get uh, a different uh, formula x e by b is equal to 2 pi x times sigma i by lambda and lambda sigma i can be written as lambda by 2 pi times e by b. So, this is one expression and uh, we need to eliminate lambda. So, we will go to the other part of the calculation. The area under the curve is the work required to separate the planes of atoms. Hence, the area represents twice the true surface energy gamma. You see, when you create uh, uh, or when you break a, a bond okay, or a plane, we, we will see this in much more detail in a fracture mechanics. We will bring this concepts. When you separate these two, you know, uh, when you break an atom, you are cre essentially creating two surfaces. Okay, so that is why it is given, and uh, it is surface energy gamma is being considered, and which is equal to integral zero over lambda by two sigma i sine two pi x by lambda dx. So we can just solve this. It's a simple integral. So what you get is uh, sigma i lambda two by times minus cos 2 pi x by lambda to the limits, we can apply these limits 0 to lambda by 2. Okay. Suppose if you substitute these limits, then we get this. Um, so, you get uh, finally lambda i, sorry, sigma i lambda by 2 pi into 2 or lambda is equal to 2 pi gamma by sigma i. Suppose if you compare this uh, e uh, equation with this equation and combine, compare and combine, what we will get? We will get something like sigma i is equal to e gamma by b to the power half. So, this is the expression for the cohesive force of for separating the uh, two planes of atoms, theoretical value. So, for many materials, uh, surface energy gamma is given by E B by 40 and then the theoretical strength is about E by 6. The problem is, this value E by 6 is very, very high. Okay, For example, E 
normally measured in GPA, right? But in uh, practice, most of the engineering materials or any common uh, material called mild steel, uh, even if you calculate uh, the theoretical strength, it is 200 by 6, approximately, it is 33 GPA, which is phenomenally high, far away from the, what we get in a, a simple tensile test. So, this is one uh, big discrepancy. Right? Similarly, another example, same, same idea we are trying to uh, give. Suppose if you take this uh, lattice and then uh, this is a shear stress applied in both directions. Just imagine that uh, because of this shear stress, the atom 1 moves from the new position 1 prime and making a displacement delta, still it is within the elastic deformation. Please understand we are talking only about elastic deformation. Suppose if you consider this one prime atom comes to somewhere in between here, between uh, the two and four, some middle bay. That means the atom has reached a metastable position. Okay. But in this metastable position, from here, the atom can move either to this direction or this direction. Either both ways are possible. Right. So, because at this mid position, you see that the potential energy is almost zero. It, it has nothing to do. It can, it can go this way or that way. Okay. So, if you assume that uh, the displacement or the external force applied, the shear stress applied is good enough to pull this one prime atom to the next position that is 4 above 4, then the one prime atom will have a new neighbor, nearest neighbors, okay. It may restore the original uh, position locally, but ultimately what happens is that will result in a, a slip, crystal will result in a slip because this will move here and this will move here and this will move here like that, okay. So that is exactly uh, was shown here. So, so then also, so that is a variation of shear stress tau and a potential energy V with a displacement. So this is all nicely shown here. Here again, the shear stress necessary to shear the atoms over one, one another has been calculated to be of the order of 1 into 10 to the power 6 to 2 into 10 to the power 6 psi pounds per square inch, which is uh, 1 psi is equal to 6.5. 8.9 kilopascal. See, we use this uh, units normally. This is uh, taken from a very old text. So, they use this kind of unit system. But again, the experimentally measured values for FCC crystals are only of the order of 10 to the power 1 to 10 to the power 3 psi, okay, which is very, very low as compared to what is being shown theoretically. So, what happens is uh, these are the discrepancies, right, in terms of strength, what we actually calculate from theory and what we observe in practice. So, there is a discrepancy. So, in order to solve this discrepancy, people introduce the concept called dislocations. So, what are dislocations? Okay, we will see now. The stresses required to cause slip were measured by tension test of single crystals. G. L. Taylor, Polanyi, and Voromon independently postulated that pre existing crystal defects called dislocations were responsible for the discrepancy between measured and calculated strengths. So, this is a postulation by these three scientists and uh, they kind of prove that you know, dislocations are responsible for the, the measured low strength values in single crystals. Okay. 
So they said that the crystal slip occurs by a motion of dislocations and many aspects of plastic behavior of crystalline materials can be explained by dislocations. Among these are how crystals can undergo slip, why visible slip lines appear on surfaces of deformed crystals, why crystalline materials become harder after deformation and how solute elements affect slip. So these are some of the questions they try to explain depending I mean looking at the the dislocations behavior. Okay, so that's why the dis studying about dislocation is important as long as you deal with crystalline materials deformation behavior. Okay. So now we will slowly see uh, what is a dislocation and first we look at the geometry geometry of dislocations. So this is the a nice picture of uh, I mean schematic of a dislocation which is called edge dislocation. You see that um, you have the view of atom columns and you are looking at it from the front and what you see is uh, these are all atom columns, they are all connected by the kind of springs and you have that extra plane but inserted in the middle and uh, this is called edge dislocation, this kind of a geometry is called edge dislocation. One special form of uh, dislocation is an edge dislocation shown here. The geometry of an edge dislocation can be visualized as having a cut part away into a perfect crystal and then inserted an extra half plane of atoms. So what it means is uh, it looks as if this particular plane was cut from somewhere and got inserted from the perfect lattice. It gives an impression like that. The dislocation is the bottom edge of this extra half plane. So, so this is an extra half plane, and this is the this is where the the dislocation core is there, and uh, this is a bottom edge. The the other schematic shown here is also showing the edge dislocation only, but it gives a little more information. What are the other information? There is something called B here, that something marked B here, and there is a symbol for this dislocation, edge dislocation line. Okay. So the edge dislocation line is here, so we will see what is this line. So because we are seeing it from the front, and this picture shows much more detail even though it gives a similar information, but more details can be found here. What is the more detail you are seeing? So this extra half plane is uh, inserted here. This is a whole crystal and this extra half plane is moving in a plane called a glide plane or a slip plane. So this is a plane and then you can see that this symbol is the dislocation symbol is here over here. That means this whole block is tilted here and then you are seeing the dislocation line. So the dislocation line is going through the plane of this uh, slide. Okay, it is going perpendicular inside. So that is what is shown here. So that is called dislocation line and this is an extra half plane and this, this the wherever the crystal got slipped to a distance which is B called Berger's vector also called slip vector is shown here. So extra half plane of atoms inserted in a crystal structure is a typical description of edge dislocation. 
the another important observation is b is perpendicular to dislocation line so this in this geometry the burgers vector is perpendicular to dislocation line so you can see that this is uh, b here and this is a dislocation line so this is perpendicular to this so these are all the very important characteristics of edge dislocation geometry the next one is crew dislocation okay so you can see the nice uh, schematic here the huge block got slipped and uh, what you are seeing is that both of them are same but one is in the side view the other is in the top view so you are looking at from here and we are looking at one this is from here this side view and this is from the top view so as the name implies the the crystal block has you know got displaced in a a kind of a screw axis here okay i will explain this in much more simpler way in a couple of slide in a couple of slides so here the displacement is uh, measured again by a burgess vector burgess vector b and then here you see that it is uh, the crystal has slipped okay whatever the b here it has moved and it would have come out of the other end and uh, you see the dislocation line is here it is shown here and for the better view the b is shown here and i will explain this a little more by taking up this additional schematic this is a unslipped a crystal unit and this is a slipped crystal unit exhibiting a dislocation line okay so here you see that uh, this is shear stress applied in the top and bottom and as a result the crystal has slipped and you see that uh, the slip vector is here which is equal to burgers vector b and uh, this is a glide plane you just uh, compare this glide plane with what is shown in a edge dislocation and this is the dislocation line okay so the dislocation line is here which is uh, with respect to b uh, it is parallel okay so this is one of the characteristics here so screw dislocations can be visualized as a spiral ramp parking structure so it is some analogy uh, parking structure you can you can think it's a huge uh, structure you can example one circuit around the axis leads to one plane up or down whether it is a positive screw or a negative screw right planes are connected in a manner similar to the levels of spiral parking ramp okay. and of course uh, the spiral uh, planar ramp resulting from a shear deformation the burgers vector b is parallel to the dislocation line can we check this so what is dislocation line here so this is uh, dislocation line and this is slip vector this is parallel to this so b is parallel to dislocation line in a screw dislocation geometry b is perpendicular to the dislocation line in a edge dislocation geometry these are all the important points to keep in mind so burgers vector b is a measure of lattice distortion so this is also uh, is a is a measure of lattice distortion okay, not just describing individual uh, dislocation alone and why the name screw dislocation because uh, yeah as i just mentioned in the previous slide 
if you take uh, this cylindrical uh, body and what it's shown here is uh, a screw dislocation uh, with the budget sector B here and suppose uh, if you try to continue this this displacement here as per the screw it will go in a positive direction of and make make the cylinder as a screw completely it will become a screw the path of this uh, the glide will be in a spiral way and it will this rod will become like a screw okay so that is why it is called screw dislocation and uh, similarly um, yeah so this uh, what is this arrow around this this is called burger circuit how do we do that we will see in a minute and uh, we do it in a clockwise direction so it is a positive sense and we can also do it in a anti clockwise then it will be a negative sense okay so this is called burger circuit and what is the next edge screw and mixed dislocation we are not just going to uh, stay with edge or screw geometry alone we are also going to have a mixed dislocations if you look at the schematic here it is uh, nicely shown that this is a screw dislocation in this end and in this end it is edge dislocation okay so edge character and the screw character completely 100 percent and uh, what about the mixed one where do you find somewhere in the middle how do we understand this so you look at this top view again so this is a pure uh, screw dislocation and this is a pure edge dislocation here and somewhere in between it is b still it is very difficult to understand from this this uh, image because it is uh, the displacements are not uh, they are shown here but not clearly we will take up some assistance to explain this a more schematic so what what you are seeing here is this is the a crystal which is slipped here in this direction a b c and uh, the force is applied in this direction so the crystal part of the crystal slips here and then it has both a uh, screw as well as uh, uh, edge okay so if you look at from the top so this is how it will look like so this schematic will be uh, very simple to explain now imagine that uh, this is the ac line which is marked in a dotted line here which is now drawn as a, a full thick line so a b c so if you compare this geometry here in a 2d plane that is top view and what you see here is dislocation line is curve like this so this is screw dislocation which is parallel to b and this is a dislocation line which is also parallel and it comes and ends here the dislocation line is perpendicular to the b that is edge character but somewhere in between it will be a mixed dislocation so how this b and line will orient obviously when you say mixed you should anticipate that the b should have some angular relationship with the dislocation line so how do we understand that so this is the dislocation line and this is a burkers vector so if you just uh, take the two components the angular components right it will have some angular uh, relationship right so one is edge and another is screw the so screw will be suppose if you make this uh, triangle 
and this is an alpha alpha angle then it is b cos alpha a screw component or b sin alpha is an edge component so that is how you should uh, look at it a mixed mixed dislocation will have both the characters of edge as well as screw uh, dislocation uh, i mean characteristics and that can be understood by this